Hey everybody. So here we go. We're finishing up the elevators and the trim tabs. Um, and you see here, I'm working with that spray glue that I had talked about last time. Uh, normally you would use a tank sealer in there and this spray glue actually worked so well uh, that I had a hard time getting it out. And so it was one of those things I figured just more spray glue will work. And it works really well. I've used that industrial strength spray glue before. Uh, it's amazing stuff. There's no, it's not going to move. I'm not worried about it. Here I'm kind of checking my work, going over those forward rivet holes. Uh, or I guess those, those are technically trailing rivets. And I did find some later on that I would need to go ahead and remove, uh, which I will get to. Here I'm actually cleaning up... Uh, cleaning up the goop, if you will, because I did actually use the tank sealer there, of course, and now I'm going through and placing all the rivets in and using the rivet tape, and I'm going to flip it over and actually do the, the the riveting of all those pieces. I will admit, this is skipping around a little bit. I mean, uh, this is... 9-15 uh, here, and then later you're going to see me working on 9-16 and then 9-17, but in the very beginning I was starting on 9-18, I think. So I did skip around uh, a little bit of this area just, you know, uh, due to not having materials or just wanting to work on something else, um, and that's fine. There's no big deal there. By the way, any sudden wardrobe change you see is typically a different day, uh, unless you see me take a shirt off uh, which sometimes I will do because it gets hot. Here I'm going back through and uh, checking instructions and adding a couple of extra rivets uh, on the ends uh, where I noticed I had missed them. And I am using a couple of the blind rivets in a couple places just because I don't have the necessary tool to get some of those really tight locations. Uh, and I also note I did not flip both of them over and do the other side. You'll see me do that later. And this is me blind riveting in the shear clips. Once all that's done, it's time to progress on to the bending of the leading edges. Oh, this is fun. This is actually, and by fun I mean the other thing, by the way. The, this, this is tedious. Um, you, the way I found to do it previously was to basically drill into the PVC pipe and uh, get everything all clecoed up that way and then just to use brute force and muscle it over. And you can see here, I also put some masking tape or strapping tape uh, between each Clico so that I don't get any pillowing as I do the bend. I found this to work pretty well. The goal, of course, is to create a uniform bend um, to make it look like everything nicely curves. And yeah, that's what I'm going for. And you can see here that it uh, mostly works. Not perfect, but it looks good. Each of the elevators has uh, three uh, sections that you have to bend on each side for a total of six per elevator, so for a total of 12. And, um, you know, it, it's just another one of those things. You got to do it, and not really a lot of fun, but, you know, it's something you got to do. I did decide that I, I ordered extra. Uh, blind rivets. So these are blind rivets to use here. I ordered extra blind rivets because I want... Uh, I didn't have any pillowing. In fact, I think it came out very nice, but I just wanted more... I want it to be more secure than it is. Um, it's hard to explain. Uh, you'll have to see. I'll see if I can find one of the photos, but uh, I like the idea of having... The, those, those rivets are really far apart, is I guess what I'm getting at, and I like the idea of of having more of them down there so that it's, they're, it's more secure, I guess is what I'm getting at. Lots and lots of them, though. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying there are too few of them. Uh, obviously, this is as many as Van says there should be. Uh, but, you know, it's my plane. I'll build it how I want to. <laughs> and as with all things, once you're done with one, you go to the other. Uh, same process, both sides. Uh, didn't really learn how to streamline it or make it any more efficient. It's... It's uh, it's the same all along. I did find, you know, bending the edge down, which is what you're seeing me there do there, uh, really did help things greatly. Made made the edges come together more smoothly, uh, which I liked. Don't feel like you're gonna overdo it either. Um, it's one of those things that I put probably a, you know a two or three degree bend in these, uh, and that came out perfectly. I did a lot less on, on the rudder, and on the rudder, I don't think it came together quite as nicely and that's one of the reasons on the rudder I used extra uh, pop rivets to kind of help with the pillowing 
Thankfully, my elevators don't have any of that, but still, I like the idea of the extra, extra rivets. In theory, if you've got enough bend, putting those two pieces together, uh, they just kind of overlap happily, and you put in the pop rivets, and it's trivial. If you struggle to put those two pieces together, the two sides together, then you probably don't have enough bend. Um, and here I think I went back and I added more bend right there because I was like, you know, those were those were fighting me a little bit and that's not good. So, and now I'm I'm putting in the pop rivets. So if my memory serves, this was actually the Friday before Memorial Day, and I took the day off uh, and put uh, three or four hours into the plane, and then over the course of the Memorial Day weekend, um, I put in shoot almost 20 hours. I mean. Uh, I did a lot of work, and that's what you're going to be seeing. So this this video is sort of longish, uh, because the next ones are going to be even longer. Uh, here I'm working with the weights. Now let me be clear here, those weights sucked to work with. Primarily because you have to shave down one side of one set of the weights so that they are not only even, but so that they're not quite as thick and you can fit them in there. Here you can see I'm weighing them to make sure that the two sets are the same. Um, and they're just kind of painful to work with because they crumble as you work with them. But perseverance being what it is, I stuck with it. And eventually I got it, you know, got it to the where I was satisfied and got them wedged in there. And that's what this is a picture of here. And then once you get one side done, you go to the other. I did, uh, I did kind of have to use like the tack hammer a little bit to, to help me get those bolts through there. Uh, and then on this one, once I got the the bolts all put in and corrected, I realized, wow, that that bolt went in much farther than this other one. And I, I realized I didn't have my wrench seated, so that's why you see me going back and doing the other one again. Once I get that done, I get some lunch and I start working on the trim elevator tabs again and the horns. Um, I started to leave those foam ribs in there with the spray glue because it was super strong. And I thought, man, that's great. But I realized there's no way to actually put all the rivets in if those are still in there. So I did have to yank those out uh, and I cleaned it up a little bit and then I will go back in and respray those. And right there, you were watching me change out the yoke. Uh, you can see I now have the longer on yoke on. That's the one on the left here. I do recommend getting one of those as well as getting the four inch no hole yoke. And I'll talk about that later. Um, so here I am, I'm putting in the rivets to put the spar on on the back. Could not have done this without the longer on yoke. And here I'm putting the spray glue back in and putting the ribs back in. I doused it with that spray glue. That stuff works really well. Um, I don't see a need to, in this particular piece, because of the nature of how the skin is a folded piece as opposed to two pieces coming together, I did not see the, the need uh, for the tank sealer. That spray glue stuff is uh, it's amazing. I've used it for years and years. Those pieces will never come out. So I'm actually perfectly satisfied with that. I'm sure there are purists who will uh, disagree with me and tell me I did it wrong, but you know, so be it. It is what it is. The nice thing is if they ever turn out to be right, I can always fix it. I mean, this is one of those pieces especially that it would be fairly trivial to remove it now that it's on or as soon as it's on and fix it. So uh, that, that's actually been interesting. It's kind of taught me that nothing is permanent. It, you know, if anything needs to be fixed, you can fix it. Uh, yay. So here we're moving on to 9-18, and that's working with the 35-inch uh, long trim tab hinges. You cut two of them out of the really long, the single really long hinge you get with the kit, uh, and then you have to shape them a little bit. Uh, but it's, it's actually fairly simple, it makes sense, and it's really easy. And once it's done, then it's just a matter of mounting it onto the uh, the, each piece, drilling a couple holes, and then going back and forth and drilling the rest of the holes. And you'll notice I, I kind of move around when I drill uh, a little bit. You know, I'll drill the left hole, then the right hole, then the middle hole, etc. As opposed to just continually drilling from one direction to the other. Uh, once I have those initial holes drilled, then you can go back and drill, you know, in one direction, you'll be fine. But the reason I, I don't start from one side and just go immediately to the other is that's a good way to get a twist. And you don't want a twist, because that's just bad. 
So now it's a matter of putting the elevator on and you'll see that I'm marking every once in a while at the very end, there's that piece of hinge that's sticking out. Uh, it's important that you not just lop that off. Uh, you actually want the hinge itself, the, 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 the center rod to stick that far out because you're gonna fold it down and safety wired in, which I'll talk to in a bit. Um, but yeah, leaving that hinge at length like that is, is good for now. Uh, and I will eventually take those pins out, take them upstairs, cut them, and then put it, reassemble it all back together. And here I am going in back and doing the other side. So uh, something else I'd like to talk about is the fact that I'm going to be finally getting back in the air and flying again. Uh, for the last two and a half months, three months, whatever it is, I've been unable to get up in the sky because my certified flight instructor's plane uh, had a bit of an issue where someone that had rented it basically had a prop strike on landing. He, he landed really hard and hit the hit the runway, and unfortunately on certified aircraft, and probably should be on any aircraft, when you have a prop strike, you have to rebuild the engine. Uh, and it was twenty or thirty thousand dollars of repair uh, on his poor little Cessna 172, which, gosh, it probably isn't even worth that much. Uh, I mean, this thing is, I think Moses flew it. It's, it's pretty old, but uh, it's, uh, it's one of those things. He's finally back. It's got, you know, 10 plus hours on it now. He's ready to get back in the air, and so am I. Uh, I've kind of been missing it. Um, so I'm excited. Uh, I've decided that Wednesday mornings I'm going to go out and fly. And that's that's gonna be fun. Looking forward to it. Here you see me deburring, lots of deburring all those holes. And then it's a matter of going upstairs to the trusty bandsaw and cutting along those lines. And you'll see I've got the pins out because I don't want to cut the pins. You want the pin to stay the length it is. That's important. What's cut? I bring them downstairs and do a little deburring on the uh, now rough ends there. And this time to install it. So again, start with clecoing everything, uh, and then one rivet at a time. And it's a little awkward uh, just because of where it is. And of course, I block the camera, you know, every time. Anytime there's something important to see, I block the camera because, well, I'm an idiot. <sighs> I'll try to be better about that. I, I've started moving the camera around, uh, and then I cle uh, cleco on the trim tab side and start riveting those suckers in and then the next fun part is actually putting those two pieces together and getting that pin back in without bending it <laughs> that's the trick don't bend it uh, and I found that <clears throat> initially I just started sliding in it went fine and then eventually I got about halfway down I'm like okay I can't make this go any further and if I try to use my hand and that's what you see me here I'm fighting with it try to use my hand it wouldn't work I used some WD-40 and that helped and eventually I was like man how do I do this and I found out if I use the tack hammer and just tap ever so lightly tap 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 um, it will eventually go in especially if you've rounded the end of that pin ever so slightly uh, the, the trick is just to make sure you don't go too far. So every once in a while as you're tapping it in, look at the end where it would be coming out at and just make sure you don't push into the side of the airplane because you could keep tapping. Um, and well, that would be wrong. So uh, I will talk about the safety wire thing later. So something they don't mention in the plans is that you need to buy safety wire. Uh, and I have now, but I didn't have any at the time that I filmed this. And so the safety wire version of this is coming probably in two or three videos from now. Uh, as of this recording, I haven't actually done it yet. It's trivial now, but I've got it. So get yourself some safety wire and a good pair of safety wire pliers. Look that up because that will make your life uh, much, much better. Uh, apparently, if you get bad pliers, you'll want to club kittens, which I don't really want to do that. So there you see me with a tack hammer there. So here I came back the next day and I, I remembered there was a couple rivets that were not super flat uh, and I couldn't remember which one they were on. And so I decided that I need to go back and drill those out. And so that's what I'm doing here is just repairing a couple of um, rivets on the trailing edge that I knew I had done wrong and that I needed to fix. Um, you know, it's okay. We can always come back and do these things later. And then I noticed that uh, there were a couple of uh, blind rivets that I had neglected to do previously on both of them so I did that as well and so here we're beginning the tail cone so this is the beginnings of section 10 um, this is the rest of 
the empennage. This is the final section of the empennage, not counting the assembly section. Here I'm cleaning up. I'm really bad about cleaning up. I gotta clean my shop more often. Um, but it starts with uh, taking a piece of bar stock and creating this tie-down bar from that length of AEX tie-down bar stock, whatever. And the first thing you have to do is tap it uh, to three-eighths of an inch. Uh, so I had to go upstairs and find my tap, and that's, you know, find it and get it and use it and blah, blah, blah. So that's what I was doing there. Uh, and then it's about uh, making, you know, just doing the next piece. So this is the, this is the tie-down bar back-end area. Uh, ribs and whatnot that is part of the back of the plane. It's, it's, this is cool. This, I started to get really excited here because now I'm finally working on a piece that once it's all put together will actually look like an airplane. And you'll see that next time. Pretty much over the course of this entire weekend, and remember this was a Friday, uh, I, had, I had the entire empennage assembled at one point uh, virtually. Uh, so I, I, I was very excited. You know, finally got the wife out to check it out and it was cool um, another really cool thing is I think I'm not sure where we were but the next day in the early morning uh, my wife and I got to go hang out with a fellow who had built an RV 10 and actually got to you know to get her to sit in it and really have a better idea of what we were building and it really helped by the way that his RV is amazing uh, he went over the top I mean it's full leather interior all glass you know that kind of crazy uh, just beautiful so it's nice to have a resource like that uh, available but like I said this video uh, could be exceedingly longer believe it or not I know we're rapidly approaching 20 minutes here uh, and that's largely because of the amount of work that I did over the course of these three or four days um, oh by the way right here I'm working on the horizontal uh, stabilizer attachment bars. You have to kind of hammer them a little bit to make them flat. Uh, it does tell you about that. It says, you know, you want to preload and give them a couple smacks to get make sure they are flat. Uh, you do actually have to do this. A couple of times it'll tell you to do something like this and then you go check it on the table and you're like, it is perfectly flat. Uh, these weren't, these were ever so slightly bent. So anyways, I'm going to call it there. Next time we will talk about uh, creating all the stiffeners, uh, fuselage stiffeners, and basically putting the fuselage together. Hell of a lot of fun, and you actually start to get a good notion of what this thing is going to look like. Can't wait, guys. Thanks for paying attention. If you've stuck around this far, really appreciate it. Good times.